Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Katie Steiner. Now we're diving into the second part of this big sports weekend here in the Inland Northwest. About 100 firefighters and three helicopters are battling this fire right now. We wanted to find out how cold is the Spokane River right now. So we have our water thermometer right now. I can tell you it's about 65 degrees. That's just on the surface here in the river. That Ironman, if they're going to be out there competing or for hoop fest, are they going to have to deal with rain? Will they get sunshine? And Dave, you have all the answers. The only place you can actually buy fireworks right now is Deer Park. It's not just any old application. It is this thick, 191 pages they had to fill out. Why don't you save some extra time and carpool because there's going to be a lot of people parking in just a couple of blocks. This is all that's left of one of the elevators that started burning here yesterday in Craigmon at about 225. Take a look at how hot it is. You can see this garbage can is completely melted, but they have very specific times and days when you can light off those fireworks. Not only can you get a 16 ounce haystack here at Grind Central Station in the Spokane Valley just off Trent. If you come here after hours trying to break in, you'll get something else. Your picture on camera in Spokane, $3.43 right now. But a month ago, we were paying 20 cents more than that. Well, we wanted to take a moment to show you some of the pictures that we have on our website. We have over 300 of your pictures right here on SWXRightNow.com. So it's called a missing man flyover. So what's going to happen? There's four planes here and this plane is going to fly west just like this and the other three planes are going to fly in formation. They're not going to change to honor the pilots that have died. If you're heading to Billings, it's going to be a little more expensive. 162 round trip in Boise, not too bad. 133 round trip. Compare that to plane plane tickets and it might not be a bad way to go on the road. I haven't seen those kind of prices in a long time here in Spokane. But we're going to have much more coming up for you after the break. We're seeing very low prices and they might stick around. Take a look at what we're looking at right now in Spokane. $3.43 right now, but a month ago we were paying 20 cents more than that a year ago. Pretty much the same thing, almost 30 cents more than that as well. But take a look at Coeur d'Alene. If you think Spokane is cheap, Coeur d'Alene, 307 for a gallon of gas. A month ago, they, they were paying 30 cents more. And a year ago, more than 40 cents more than what they're paying right now in Coeur d'Alene. That nationwide average is 320. So not too bad in Coeur d'Alene, but in Spokane, you're paying a little bit more than that national average. So why is everything so much cheaper? There's a couple different reasons. Your first reason is the tensions in the Middle East are a lot better. There's negotiations going on right now. That's why those gas prices are staying low. And if those negotiations keep continuing, we'll see gas prices even lower, continuing to be nice and low. That second one is we're making more oil here in the United States, and that's helping those gas prices stay down as well. Another thing to note, the United States is also using less oil in general. One of the reasons here, more cars are have they have better gas mileage. That's been a trend in the past couple of years to have those really fuel efficient cars on the road. Another reason, more people are using natural gas to heat their homes and some companies are trying to figure out how to use natural gas in those big diesel trucks. So that's why when you fill up the pump in the next couple of days, you are going to be seeing some relief. Reporting live in Spokane, Katie Steiner, KHQ Local News Today. Well, we are here at Hawthorne and Whitworth Drive and take a look. You can see this tree was down across the roadway. We're seeing branches just like this all across this yard. You can see just huge branches. This was a very large tree. Take a look. You can see as we cross Whitworth Drive here, this was the other part of the tree. You can see people have been working to clean this area up. We're we're seeing a lot of pine needles here on the roads, also some pine cones and just this huge trunk of the tree all over the place. And then also on the grounds here, you can see another tree came down. Whitworth University was really hit hard. In fact, we went, we drove by the university. Campus is closed because it is just such a mess. We also drove up Country Homes Boulevard. Not a whole lot of power in that area. We could see some houses that did have the power on. However, some stoplights and some power lights were off as well. So keep 
that in mind. Obviously treat a stoplight that's not working as a four way stop and we saw 45 50 mile per hour winds in this area and it wasn't just here at Whitworth. We were also at we saw damage in Winthrop, Cooley City, Nez Pelham, Deer Park here in North Spokane, Spokane Valley, all the way into Idaho, Diamond Lake and Sandpoint. We have seen so many different scenes just like this one with trees into the roads. We've seen trees into houses. This storm was just so large. We've seen situations just like this one all throughout of Washington and into northern Idaho. And we're going to be going around North Spokane to show you a couple different locations to see what it looks like here. Reporting live in North Spokane, Katie Steiner, KHQ Local News. Man, Coeur 2014 is officially underway. Now this right here is the scene just a couple of minutes ago as thousands of triathletes plunged into the chilly Lake Coeur d'Alene, all vying for the same thing, that title of Iron Man. Good morning and welcome to KHQ Local News Sunday. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Katie Steiner. Now we're diving into the second part of this big sports weekend here in the Inland Northwest as organizers are celebrating the 10th Iron Man in Coeur d'Alene. Right now let's go to the Lake City where our own Michelle Dapper is live with more. Good morning Michelle. How is it out there? Uh, good morning. So much Dylan. It's calm out there now but it is going to get very busy very very quickly and if you're planning to head to downtown Spokane for the second half of Hoop Fest, as always, be prepared for a bit of a hike. Now, there are about 250,000 people packing into just a couple of blocks, and a parking spot can be very hard to come by. There are five different garages that will be open, and you can see where some of them are right now on your screen. And we've put the phone numbers to those garages on our website, khq.com, so you can call ahead and check to see how full they are. You can try your luck at straight parking as well. Those garages remained open until about 10 o'clock in the morning yesterday and then they just got filled up. But if you'd like to learn more about Hoop Fest or Iron Man Coeur d'Alene right now, head to our website at khq.com. We have in-depth coverage, including maps, some of the stories we've brought you about the people competing this weekend, and a way for you to track your friends and family through both events. You can find all of that right now on our homepage, khq.com. In the next 24 hours, the White House says it could name a new Secretary of Veterans Affairs. Now, this will be the person responsible for reforming a medical system that's drawing sharp criticism. A White House review of the agency says the entire VA medical system must be, quote, restructured and reformed. Now, this review comes after allegations that the VA Medical Center in Phoenix, Arizona, kept a secret waiting list of veterans who need care, all in an effort to hide long-term wait times. Now, the investigation's key findings include the VA's goal of scheduling patients for treatment within 14 days is misunderstood. Understood. The report also found the VA's equipment and technology is outdated and there's a shortage of doctors, nurses, and staff. Analysts say that there's one type of person the White House will look to put in this position. Consumer alert for you this morning. Between now and Friday, you'll probably go to the grocery store to stock up for the 4th. Just be prepared for a little bit of a shock. The prices. The trip down the grocery aisle for this 4th of July will be a pricey one. Beef for burgers is up 14% from last year. A slice of cheese will cost you 11% more. A tomato, 12% more. That's why shopping experts have come up with a few ways for you you to get frugal for your 4th of July food. Terry Gott, the founder and CEO of GrocerGame.com, says check the newspaper for deals. Also, think about choosing a substitute like chicken instead of a cheeseburger or go with corn on the cob, which is cheaper than chips. She also points out grocery stores generally offer their best bargains around the 4th, so stock up right now. Consumer experts are estimating it'll cost you nearly $67 to feed 10 people on the 4th. One other thing that's going to cost you a little bit more starting this week, filling up your your gas tank. According to AAA, gas prices nationwide will average about $3.68 a gallon, which is up 17 cents from this time last year. Although it's below the highest record of $4.11 in 2008, experts are watching oil prices because of the ongoing violence in Iraq. And despite those prices, AAA is guessing that more than 41 million people will travel for the fourth. And those gas prices are really expensive. I just filled up my tank. I haven't seen those kind of prices in a long time here in Spokane. But we're going to have much more coming up for you after the break, including some Hoop Fest pictures. They're pretty cute. Stick around.
Welcome back. Mother Nature has cooperated with Hoopfest this weekend, keeping the rain away from downtown Spokane. But for people living east of us, she hasn't been so accommodating. Take a look at some video out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Heavy rains have flooded the area, and right now you're looking at Harriet Island, which is right on the Mississippi River. The pavilion and the playground are under several feet of water. The Twin Cities hasn't had this much rain in a very long time. In fact, it's flirting with their record rainfall, and they have more on the way. The Minneapolis St. Paul Airport is right on the river as well, but the flood wall is holding all of the water back. But take a look at this playground. You can see there's just so much water in that area, several feet. And Dave, I'm actually from the Twin Cities area, and my parents live right on the Mississippi River, and they say that the flooding there is the worst they've seen in a really really long time and they said the funny thing is normally they see this kind of flooding in April or March but to have it so late in the season in June is interesting oh yeah we've actually had quite a bit of rainfall concentrated in that part of the country yeah so yeah no relief even severe weather getting ready to I hit know. that region for today they once need, again they need some serious sunshine can't wait for Wednesday that looks like a fantastic day to be out on the water you know it, on a water day on <laughs> Wednesday it's a morning day for me <laughs> see I'm more of like okay let's you Use the water to cool down so I'm all about the all day long on the lake but if you're in town for Iron Man you're in town for Hoop Fest thank you so much for watching us welcome to Spokane we hope you have a fantastic day are you gonna be able to go out to Hoop Fest today uh, today I'm probably gonna pass on Hoop Fest you were there yesterday yes. so mm -hmm. that's okay we'll let we'll let you slide this oh time. thanks a lot <laughs> hopefully everybody has felt at home coming to Spokane absolutely and we're gonna have much more coverage of Hoop Fest and Iron Man as you see here coming up on KHQ local news at 5 o'clock o'clock and six o'clock we're gonna have team coverage lots of live shots make sure you tune in at five o'clock and six o'clock we will see you then have a fantastic day